first reader wants to know, if you cut an earthworm in half, do you get two full new earthworms? So we're going to explore that by asking our expert, Emily. The answer depends largely on the type of worm and where it's cut. The common British earthworm, Lubrigus terrestris, can generally survive being cut in half, as long as it's severed near enough to the tail end to leave most of its vital organs intact. The earthworm's body consists of around 150 rings called annuli. The mouth is at one end, followed by 31 rings and a thickened saddle called the clitellum. The clitellum secretes a sticky, clear mucus that keeps the worm moist, allowing it to breathe by absorbing oxygen through its skin. If the worm is severed far enough below the clitellum, it will usually survive and grow a new tail. Although the replacement tail may be slightly shorter and paler than the original, the severed tail portion isn't able to survive on its own. So rather than two new worms, you end up with one slightly shorter worm plus a dead bit of a worm. However, there is a type of worm that puts the earthworm's regenerative ability to shame, the planarian flatworm. This invertebrate, which belongs to a separate phylum from earthworms, is able to reform its entire body from slivers of the animal's original body size. When the planetarian regrows its head after decapitation, the creature remarkably keeps all of its old memories. Okay, you're good. So as Emily said, we can see here, this is the clitellum that she was talking about. So if you cut behind the clitellum, the beginning of it will survive and the end of it will not survive. So you don't get two worms if you cut this worm in half. But there are some exceptions to this rule, and there's one type of worm that will actually regenerate itself and will result in two worms. So the second myth that we need to squash is to determine if ladybugs are actually bugs or if they're something else. First, let's talk about what a bug is. A bug, or true bug, is an insect in the order Hemiptera. It has a head, thorax, abdomen, two antennae, and three pairs of legs. Bugs' wings are their most distinguishing feature. They have two sets of wings, the forewing and the hindwing. The forewing has a hard outer shell that covers about half of the wing. This is called hemilytra. The rest of the forewing is made up of membranous wing. This is a small triangular section towards the bottom of the abdomen. Now, let's take a look at a ladybug. A ladybug is an insect in the order Coleoptera. It too has a head, thorax, and abdomen, two antennae, and three pairs of legs. Now, the wings are a little bit different. A ladybug has a set of membranous wings under a fully hardened pair of elytra. So, Laura, you tell me, is a ladybug a bug? So to figure out if ladybugs are actually bugs, first we have to look at a true bug. So right here, you can see that this true bug here has a hemilytra. So the elytra only covers half of its body, and under here are those membranous wings. On the other hand, a ladybug does not have a hemilytra. It has a full elytra, and therefore ladybugs can't actually be bugs, and they're really insects. So one of the first questions that we got was, are spiders insects? And we thought that was a great question. So we're going to explore if spiders are insects or if they're something else. It's common for people to think that spiders are insects, but in fact, they are arachnids. You can see here that insects have a pair of wings and antennae and three body segments. While arachnids only have two body segments, they possess mandibles and they don't have antennae or wings. So I agree with Andrea, you can see that insects have wings, whereas spiders do not have wings. Also, just as she said, insects only have three pairs of legs, whereas spiders have four pairs of legs. Well, thanks for tuning in to this week's version of Miss Squashers. See you next week.